Hello YouTube, it's Everything Epan here and it's been a long time since I've done a video basically, uh, any type of video other than that uh, update that I posted. Uh, today we're going to be doing a video on how to install Windows Whistler Build 2267 in VirtualBox. It's a little weird for me that I have not done a tutorial in what I think it's been almost two months. So. Um, Obviously, my knowledge is not going to be uh, near as good with a virtual box as it was a couple months ago. Um, if you've not seen my update video on what's been going on, uh, go ahead and check that out. Uh, I'll have a link in the description to watch that. Um, and I'm taking your guys' suggestions with an open mind. Some of these videos I just cannot do. Like, a lot of you have been requesting Mac videos, and sometimes I just, I, it's really hard to do Mac. Like, it's been impossible for me to do that. But, um, Linux videos I can do. Destroy, the, the most popular one I've seen is destroying operating systems. Now, um, not really familiar with doing that, but I guess you know that's something I can uh, start getting used to doing. Possibly, I'm keeping an open mind on that. As of right now, I'm not sure I'm going to do those videos. Um, and then I've been debating on whether or not I want to do a blog every so often. I don't know what I would vlog, but uh, you can leave comments down below on what exactly I could do. I'm not really sure, but um. But yeah, without further ado, for the first time in two months, let's get into a VirtualBox tutorial. So, um, of course, there will be links in the description for all the uh, for the ISO um, on WinWorld PC, and I will also leave a link in the description for MS DOS because um, you will need this for this installation. Now, we're going to open a VirtualBox here, and I do still have all my virtual machines, as you can see, they have not gone away. Um, and of course, my desktop does look a little bit cleaner, but uh, that's because I had to re—I had to refresh my computer, and all my applications got removed. Um, but that was uh, there was a problem with it for some reason; it wasn't working very well, so I had to refresh it. So, enough of me talking. We're going to actually do something for once. Um, so we're going to call this Windows Whistler Build Two Two Six Seven. And just go ahead and uh, set the version here as Windows XP 32-bit and click Next. And I'm going to have to do a different name because there's already a folder. So then click Next after you do the name. And you can leave this at 192 megabytes. Um, you can put uh, fi like 512, for example, if you'd like. But really, I just r recommend leaving it at the recommended size just because sometimes if you over-allocate like like especially for older ones like Windows 98 if you put more than two gigabytes of memory dedicated um, to your virtual machine it will not work so I'm just gonna leave this at the base of 192 megabytes and click next and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and click create to create our virtual hard drive click next and then click next to leave it on dynamically allocated and we're gonna just do 10 gigs and click on create I'm not really gonna keep this anyway but it won't it won't automatically take 10 gigabytes of storage. That's why you click dynamically allocated. So now what you want to do, after creating the vir virtual machine, go ahead and click settings, and then go to storage on this tab left here. And now we're going to go ahead and add a new uh, storage controller. Or, and then we're going to add a flopping controller in order to add the MS-DOS setup, dis MS -DOS setup disks. And I'm going to leave a link in the description for my video tutorial on how to install MS-DOS 6.22 in VirtualBox um, because you will need to do this for this video. So click on OK and start up the machine and it's going to go ahead and eventually load up MS-DOS here and you're ready to install that. So we're going to install that quick and I'll be back with you guys once that's finished. And this of course is one of the parts I show in the MS-DOS installation just because, uh, you know, it's very very important uh, to do this part of the installation sorry about that um, this is uh, one of the main important steps of Whistler installation so 
you're at the date and time screen. You need to change your date and time uh, to the following date, which will be included in the description as well. Um, it's going to be uh, September the 11th of the year 2000. So, um, not that that's really a great date to uh, recognize, but uh, go ahead and enter that in and then com continue with the uh, MS-DOS installation. So continue with that and I'll be right back once it's finished. So now we have the MS-DOS installed and now what we're going to do is install Whistler. So we're going to go ahead and insert that ISO. Now I really wish I could just do the uh, MS-DOS CD method where you boot up into MS-DOS and then you uh, do the date so that way you don't actually have to install MS-DOS but I guess that's just the way it works so I'm gonna browse here for my uh, 2267 ISO which is right here and then go to click open and that's my other headset Apologies. Uh, so now that's open and we're gonna go ahead and reset the machine it should there we go boot up into the setup after you press any key. And if you were to do this straight up without installing MS DOS, for some reason it just would not work. Um, it would not let you uh, continue. This uh, setup notification would not pop up. It would just either, I think it would either blue screen or it would just stay stuck at setup is starting. So we're going to go ahead and click enter to continue on that setup notification. Click enter on the welcome screen and we're going to do the express setup by clicking enter that's now going to come up with the license agreement just go ahead and tap f8 to do that and it's now going to do a disk check and go ahead and copy files over so it's getting right into it doesn't even ask you um, which drive you want to do but i think that's just because there's only one and that would only do that if there is more than one available so uh, this process should not take long whatsoever and you are already ready to restart so go ahead and click enter to do that and uh, just leave the disk in even though I'm not sure if you still need it but I recommend you leaving it in and it's automatically going to boot up into the Whistler setup yeah, um, it came up with that uh, boot screen asking which one you wanted to do and it will automatically select Whistler so now it's going to come up with the Windows Whistler setup here. And um, you see it still kind of does uh, this theme that uh, the setup has done since Windows 98 and Windows Me did. They eventually did change this dur uh, layout during uh, the builds of Whistler and XP. I'm not exactly sure which build. Um, that they changed the layout in and everything but you'll eventually see that when we get to the later builds of Whistler. I'm still continuing to go in order on the beta builds here so for like Whistler for example I'm gonna go in order Longhorn will still try and go in order for the ones that work at least for the ones that don't work I'll just skip that one and go to the next one um, in uh, chronological order and uh, we'll just go from there. So this setup is not taking long whatsoever. It's already on the copying file stage. It's doing everything for you, which is very nice. So um, this should only take a couple more minutes to complete. So just let this sit for a little bit, and I'll be right back with you guys once it is finished. Okay, so now it's going to say that it has been installed successfully, and obviously it's still going to say Windows 2000 because they did not change everything. And if your mouse is not moving, Go up to input and disable mouse integration. Just click inside the machine and it'll work. So go ahead and click restart now. And it's going to restart the machine. And don't press any key to boot from the CD because you're going to keep going on a constant loop. I've made that mistake before. Um, and it, trust me, it's not fun because it takes forever for me to realize. Because there's one time I did it like five times and I didn't even realize it. So here is the loading screen here, and I can't tell if there's audio or not because I didn't have my headphones on, but it looks like there's a volume icon in the bottom there, so very good sign there, and I believe there is audio. So if I click in here, and the mouse is pretty 
touchy when it comes to this, but you do hear, I think you should be able to hear that. Um, I don't know if there's a way to control with the uh, sounds, but yeah, so you're now, uh, you're on the desktop, it says build 2267, there's audio, and uh, you successfully installed Windows Whistler build 2267 in VirtualBox. So, there you go guys, there's the tutorial, thank you for watching. Um, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It has been a long time since I have done a VirtualBox tutorial. Um, so I hope you guys um, are still following along with me on this um, and are, you know, uh, we're nearing 4,000 subs, which is crazy to think that uh, just the numbers keep going up. Now, obviously, I haven't been uploading lately, so numbers have not been up as much, but that is uh, no problem because I am trying my best to be able to get videos out again um, back to my normal uh, schedule in which I was doing before which was every other day so um, yeah so once again leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed comment your ideas down below for future videos um, down below and don't forget to subscribe once again thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video